The stacking order of objects is very important to understand when you're working on scenes, especially when you're only working on one layer. So I'm going to show you how to know what's on the top of something or in front of something else and how you can manipulate that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you here that I have these stars and I also have these rectangles. And as you can see, the rectangles look like they're in front of the stars. That is because they are on a layer that's actually in front of or on top of these stars. So I'm going to go to my window menu and I'm going to grab my layers. And as you can see here, it says rectangles and stars. Because the rectangle layer is actually higher up on the list of layers, that means that they are closest to our eye. So if I were to take the stars layer and click and drag it above the rectangle layer, the stars are now in front of the rectangles. So the best way that I try to use to explain this is that here you are, all right, you're standing right here looking down at this stack. And imagine it as a stack of paper or a stack of books on your floor. The book that's closest to your eye is the highest one on that stack. And the book that's closest to the floor is the one here. So the rectangles are on the floor and the stars are on top of that. So all you have to do once again is simply click and drag to rearrange those things. But that's how the stacking order works as far as layers are concerned. But what about things that are on the same layer? So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just go ahead and create a brand new document so we can just focus on that. So on this document, I'll create a rectangle and I'll give it a fill color of, let's see, green. Then I'll go ahead and create an ellipse and I'll draw it so it's overlapping like so and I'll color this one purple. So I'm going to create one more shape. I'll create a star and I'll put it over here and we'll give this one a color of blue. So what we have here are three objects all living on one single layer but how do we manipulate these guys so that we can get one thing in front of the other and vice versa? Well, if I want to bring this rectangle in front of both of these guys, all I have to do is click on the rectangle, and we don't need the layers for this, so I'll move this over. Click on the rectangle to select it with the black arrow or the selection tool, and then go to the object menu, arrange, bring to front. And this is almost like taking the layer and moving it to the top of the stack because we've moved this object in front of the other two. Now, if I want to move the rectangle and this oval here behind the star, I can hold down the shift key to grab both of them, go to object, arrange, send it back. And now both of these guys live behind the star. So it's a really cool way to really control the positions of the objects in your scene. Now, of course, this works best with a very simple scene where you have just a few objects. So when you have an artboard that's going to be packed with stuff, so you have, let's say, a beach scene, and you have a layer with sand, a layer with people, a layer with the sky, a layer with clouds, the sun, seashells, and so on, Trying to send things to the front and back this way would drive you a little bit mad. So in that case, that's when the layers become your new best friend on Earth. So you really have to know when to use the layers and when not to use the layers. When I'm doing something simple like this, three objects, no layers. But nine times out of ten, with the artwork that I create, I use the layers because I like to have the ability to hide things, to lock things, and also to click and drag and move things around so I can really dictate myself what I want to be in front of other things and behind them.